Guys, we're looking at the Fleur DM284 digital multimeter with thermal imaging. Now this thing, I'm not going to be shy, it's badass. It does a whole lot of different functions. It has our, just to run through it, we have our mode button right here which switches different functions. You know, we'll set it up for these functions here and then the mode will switch between functions that are associated with those particular spots on the dial. We have a range button that's switching things from auto ranging to manual ranging. We have a flashlight button, which once we turn it on, we'll see the flashlight. We can navigate our menus with these buttons here, up, down, left, and right, and an OK button, and a back button. We have our hold button right here, and we have the button to turn on the thermal imager. But first, we're going to start with good old-fashioned volts. We can see our voltage reading here, alternating current. We hit the mode button, we go to frequency, and then back to alternating current. Switch one more, we have volts DC, and that's the only function on that particular part of the dial. Next we have millivolts alternating current, millivolts direct current, and frequency, and we also have Fahrenheit back to millivolts. The good thing about this particular part of the meter is that you can use the millivolts function with the filled piece amp clamp and you can use the millivolts DC. Now AC is for the amp clamp. DC that would be for the other filled piece accessory heads. So you can use the filled piece accessory heads with this meter just like you would with a filled piece meter. So it's very versatile in that way. We have our own meter reading. tone we have that microfarads, nanofarads it's on nanofarads because we don't have a capacitor hooked up right now and we have a diode test we go to the next setting we have microamps alternating current microamps DC for flame sensors then back to alternating current so you can test your flame sensors with this meter too. It says probe here because we need their required probe if we're going to do this milliamp DC or milliamp AC reading. I do not have the probe, which we'll take a look down here. The probe will plug down here at the bottom if we're using amps here. If we're using milliamps, right there. Let's go back to the other side. We have a section for the probe right there, the accessory probe. We can do a regular amp alternating current, frequency, back to alternating current. We have a low Z mode. That would be if we're doing an electrical measurement in a particularly noisy area, and noisy as in electrical noise. And then we have our non-contact voltage. So let's get into this thing a little bit more. One of my favorite parts is the thermal imager. We'll hit this blue button here at the top right. And what we have to do, we also have to open up this little shutter on the back. You can see my hand there. Very interesting stuff. And you can use this to find, you know, just cold spots. They're from insulation. My phone. Let's see if I can it emits any heat. Not really. Find cold spots in a house. Find drafts, duct leaks, hot wiring, loose wiring connections. So the, the possibilities are pretty infinite. And it still displays, if you guys can see, up in the top corner, whatever it is you're working on here. You have your volts AC and your frequency still on there. Let's see. Let's play around with the settings a little bit and see what we get. It's image mode. We have this one, image mode, and we have thermal settings. We 
have different settings here. The type of diode test that you do has classic or smart. The off time at 10 minutes. Fahrenheit. So it's a pretty cool meter. So we're looking at the thermal imager. I'm just kind of moving around my room. You know, looking up in the corner here, you can see where it's a little bit warmer up there. So you can sort of see what's going on. I'm going to go into the bathroom here to have a small hall bath where the light is off. Let's look at the bath fan up there. You can see that it's getting quite a bit of air back through it. Nice and warm in there. See my water heater? You can see the warm line coming off the water heater right there. Very nice. Here's another example of showing the temperature differences on the screen. Looking around here, I have my TV and there's the cable box. You can see the cable box is much hotter. You know how hot those things get. You can actually see it's over 100 degrees on the top of the cable box. Puts things in perspective. So there's just a look at some of the ways you can use a the thermal imager. Pretty cool.